Hey there, welcome back. I've been gone for a long weekend, so for me it's been a while since I've been back in the studio. And one of the first things that I encountered when I started writing today was uh, just some information that I've learned recently about uh, track delay that um, I wanted to share on this channel because I think it's really essential to composing with MIDI. And I actually am interested in starting a whole series on this. Uh, composing with MIDI, so hopefully I'll be covering that in the uh, in the next few weeks. So I want to talk about track delay, and what this is is a feature that's built into most DAWs that allow you to um, manipulate how MIDI will play back in your DAW. So once you've recorded it, once you've actually got some MIDI and it's playing back, you can actually tell your DAW delay this MIDI uh, so that it plays back one millisecond. 500 milliseconds, three seconds later. And that may not seem that useful, but where it really comes in handy is when you're using sample libraries and you have an annoying um, latency. It feels like latency. Not when you're recording. That's a different kind of latency that this wouldn't address. But when you actually play back and you get a slight latency, you don't get things happening right on the beat, then that can be very frustrating. It can ruin your music. And that's where track delay works well, because you can actually use it in negative increments. So instead of saying, you know, I want you to delay the MIDI playback by five milliseconds, you can say, I want it to play 50 milliseconds earlier. And by that uh, mechanism, we can control and manipulate things to play back on time. So I'm going to show a demo here in just a minute, which is a simple arpeggio. I've quantized it, and you'll see that it doesn't play back on the beat. And then I'm going to measure the specific uh, number of milliseconds that we need to make that adjustment. I'll show you how to make that adjustment. I'm using Cubase, but you can do this in other DAWs. And um, by measuring it specifically, uh, I can fix this problem. Now, that's important to measure it specifically because um, different libraries are going to have different delays. Now, where these delays come in is they sample the instrument, right? And you've got this waveform, let's say, of a violin. And the attack on the violin takes a certain amount of time. The, the sample developers don't want to cut that off uh, too early or too late. They don't want um, to eat into the natural attack of the instrument. And they're going to rely on you to set your negative track delay in order to compensate. So that's why this delay occurs. Um, to a certain degree, I'm sure there are some technical uh, reasons why that's the way it is as well. Um, but that's how I think about it, and that's how I justify it, and I think it makes sense. And the track, the negative track delay will solve this problem. Aside from different libraries having different uh, measurements, different instruments within the same library will have different delays. So in order to really do this properly, you do unfortunately need to go through instrument by instrument and set this up. So the way to handle this, I'm going to show you how to measure it very specifically. But then once you've measured it, the best thing is to like save a track template, um, actually save a project template or a track template, track preset, um, so that you can quickly, you know, every time you load up that violin patch or that uh, flute patch, you can be sure that your negative track delay is already set. So it is a real pain in the butt to do it the first time out of the gate. It's one of the reasons I think people use templates. It's another nice reason uh, there's a, to use single articulation tracks, which is kind of like a whole big discussion in itself. Do I want to use have my string library on one track and use key switches, or do I want to create different tracks for each one of the key switch articulation values? Different people have different opinions on that, but if you do it single articulation, it makes it a lot easier to implement fixes for the um, delay because as you switch through the key switches, the delay may be different for individual instruments. All right, so I think that's a pretty good coverage. Let me switch over to my screen here, and uh, I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. So you can see here that um, we've got this MIDI note. What I did was I just recorded... Uh, a little arpeggio in the selected MIDI, and um, I've quantized it. So everything's happening right on the beat. Then I bounce this out, right? And what you can see in this first one here, 
um, is that there's a little bit of a gap. And I'm going to just spread this out so you... Obviously, the MIDI here is landing right on the beat. But when I bounce this audio out, we can see visually that there's a significant delay. There's a noticeable and audible delay. So I'm going to play that back, and we can hear that it's not really happening right on the beat. It's pretty close, but it's not happening right on the beat. It's a little late, and that sort of lateness, when you multiply it times maybe 50 tracks, can really be distracting and can diminish the overall quality of your recording. So what we do want to do is clean up that delay. Now, I'm going to give you a quick tip here, which is to use primary, if you're, if you're a Cubase user. I don't know how this feature may or may not be available in other DAWs. But if you're a Cubase user, there's actually down here, uh, at the bottom here, there's a primary and a secondary time display. And this is pretty slick if you're doing, uh, trying to write to picture or you're really trying to do anything in Cubase where you want to think about maybe bars and beats sometimes, but then you want to think about seconds sometimes. And this is a perfect example because I actually want to measure milliseconds here, but um, I also want to deal with stuff that's quantized on the beat. So right now I, am, I have my primary uh, time this is kind of a side topic, but really useful. My primary time is set to beats. My secondary time is set to actual time. Okay, so when I hit the period key, uh, you can see my ruler up here changing. When I hit the period key, it switches to time, and then switches to beats, time beats. So it's just uh, using primary and secondary is a really slick way to do that. So now if I, if I am in beats here, then I can quantize and snap to the bar, because I don't want to snap to a second, but then I can switch here to time, and now I can use my range tool, and I'm actually going to stretch this out and turn my quantizing off, and I'm going to measure kind of what it looks like to get to the time where my, um, where my the note, you know, where the audio is really visibly starting up here. And what I've got up there is a range length now. Now earlier I did this and the range length wound up being a little different and I think it's just a matter of what you, what you choose. Um, let me go with something more like that. I might do even less than that. But if I were to measure all the way out here and then I were to go up here and I were to see, oh, okay, in my range length, there's 33 milliseconds. So that's that's what the difference is between what I'm perceiving visually as the the attack or transient of this instrument, of this pizzicato string, and where it's landing. So there's 33 millisecond delay, essentially. So what I can do is I can go back to my violin track, and I can come over here, and, and this will be in different spots uh, in different DAWs, but in Cubase, it's right over here. This is the icon, and it's called negative track delay. So says right there, track delay in milliseconds. So I had measured with my range tool 33. I'm going to do minus 33. All right. And now when I play this back, it's going to be much more in time. Sorry, not the audio part, but the actual. Much more in time. And if I spit that out again as audio, I would find something much more similar to the second audio clip down here where you can see that it's been physically moved. Uh, the transient of the note is now right on the beat. So that's a way to measure this. And what you want to do is go through and measure this for any instrument that you use. Um, and then be sure to understand that within the same library, different instruments may have different necessary track delays. Then save that all in a template so you only have to do it once. and. Uh, Use whatever tools are available in your DAW to reuse a uh, track setting, a track preset, or a whole project or ensemble template. That will mean that you don't have to do this every single time because that would be a, a total productivity killer. If you have any questions, please leave comments. Leave your questions in the comments. Um, and thank you very much for watching. If you uh, like the video, help, find it helpful, please like and subscribe. Helps me uh, surface my videos to a broader audience. 
and I'll see you again midweek. We'll talk about something else. All right, bye.